Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to another telecast of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring God's Word to you. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about overcoming, living the life of an overcomer, or learning how to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. And just to remind you very quickly of what we have said so far, it is very clear in the scriptures that you and I are called to be overcomers, called to live an overcoming life, a life of victory, of dominion and mastery over the things of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And in the last episode, we talked about how we can live as overcomers over the world. There are scriptures, there are uh, scriptural principles, teaching that God has given to us in His Word that we need to follow to live as overcomers over the world. Today, we want to continue and talk about overcoming the flesh. The flesh is a big area of struggle for many believers. And we need to come into a place where we know how to deal with the flesh and how to keep the flesh where it's supposed to be. Now, when we talk about the flesh, 
uh, we're not just talking about the physical body, uh, although in many of our minds that may, what, that may be what we associate the term flesh with. But literally, when you look at the New Testament scripture, the word flesh uh, has to do with any ungodly desire. Uh, for example, the, our natural body has appetites. It has desires. Now, many of them are natural and are fine. They're good. There's nothing wrong with it. Your desire to eat, your desire to rest, your desire to have recreation, relax, and all of those things. They're natural appetites, and uh, they are good uh, in itself. There's nothing wrong in themselves. They were designed by God for the body. They're fine. Similarly, the soul also, um, the inner person, uh, has also uh, natural attitudes. You know, you can have a joy, you can have perseverance, endurance, uh, all, all the different attitudes that are from our inner person. Now, when any of these appetites or attitudes go off in the wrong direction, they become ungodly, that is referred to as the flesh. So the works of the flesh would be anything ungodly work of the body, anything that's being done uh, that is not direct, that's not holy, that's not right in the eyes of God. So any of our natural bodily appetites, if they are gone off doing wrong things, that's part of the flesh. Or any of the attitudes of our soul uh, that has gone off and doing the wrong thing, it's ungodly, that is also part of the flesh. So for instance, if a person uh, has a natural appetite, of course we have natural appetites of food, but then if that appetite goes into gluttony, if that appetite goes into desiring the wrong kinds of substances, with alcohol or drugs or all um, those kinds of things, obviously those are now going into what we would call as a work of the flesh because those appetites are not being used in a godly way. Or think about attitudes of the heart, uh, of the inner person. Sure, there is joy, there is pleasure. Uh, sure, we can enjoy good things, enjoy nature, enjoy good friendships, good relationships and all of that. But if that uh, uh, emotion, that is attitude of, of, of pleasure goes off into wrong things, finding pleasure in the wrong things and sinful things, then that's part of what we call as the flesh. Or anger. Now, if we are angry over injustice, angry over sin, angry over wrongdoing, that's fine. But if anger is towards another person for something that's uh, uh, for uh, no valid reason, and, and if it uh, turns into hate, then that becomes a work of the flesh. So outbursts of anger, hatred, jealousy, pride, ungodly desires, all of these things come on a, the term flesh. So what we've done is we've defined what this term flesh is literally, literally in the New Testament. Any ungodly appetite or attitude uh, that, is, uh, that is not right in the eyes of God, that comes under this whole term flesh. So now as Christians, as believers, we are born again in our spirit, but our soul, which is the mind, the will, the emotions, and our body needs still to be worked upon. Our spirit has been made new creation, but our soul needs to be renewed and the body needs to be crucified. The flesh needs to be crucified. So although we are reborn in our spirit, uh, because the soul is still under a work in progress and our emotions and our attitudes are being worked upon by God, by His Spirit, and uh, the ap appetites of our natural body are still being worked upon, uh, we will feel the pull of the things of the flesh. But God has given us instructions in His Word on what to do with the flesh. Now, in Romans chapter 8, uh, the Apostle Paul in verses 1 to 13, he makes it very clear, and I'm not going to necessarily um, give a line-by-line -line explanation of this whole passage here in Romans 8 verses 1 to 13, but let's summarize the key things he says here. What Paul says is this, that, you know, we who are born of God, we live according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. That means our life is a life that is ordered in, uh, that is ordered in alignment to the things of the Holy Spirit and not to the dictates of the flesh, the pull of our ungodly attitudes and appetites. We don't submit to that. We submit to the Holy Spirit. And then he tells us, you know, really, if we walk according to our carnal mind, our carnal thinking, then he says the carnal mind is enmity with God, and it is not subject to the law of God. That means a person who is walking according to the carnal thinking 
will not be doing what's right in the sight of God because our carnal thinking, our worldly, fleshly thinking uh, is, is, uh, leads us always into doing things that are wrong and it leads to death. And so also, uh, those who set their affection on the things of the flesh, that means the things of their ungodly appetites and attitudes, uh, if we set our affection on those things, we're going to end up doing things that are displeasing to God. Uh, so he says in verse 8, Romans 8, verse 8, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So even if there is a believer, he's born again, but if he's living according to his flesh, if he's living a life that is gratifying, satisfying the pull of his ungodly attitudes and appetites, then Paul says you cannot please God by living that way. So what is the solution? What should I do? Well, you've got to deal with the fleshly mind and the appetites of the flesh, the body. And so Paul tells us there uh, in, in Romans 8, he says, you know, uh, you have the spirit of life. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you crucify, you put to death the sinful deeds of your body. That's in Romans 8 and verse 13. He says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit put to death, crucify, mortify the deeds of your body, you will live. So there's the key on how we work, overcome the flesh. So, if you and I want to live a life that overcomes the flesh, how are we going to do it? First of all, we must begin by knowing that we are free from the power of sin. You know, sin pulls upon our ungodly appetites and attitudes. The giving yielding to our ungodly appetites and attitudes, yielding to the flesh is what results in sin. Now, Sin, the power of sin over our lives has been broken. Romans the 6th chapter brings this out very powerfully to us. Uh, Romans 6 and verse 6, the Apostle Paul says, Knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with him, that the body of sin or that the power of sin might be destroyed so that we no longer should be slaves to sin. So what did Jesus do on the cross? He broke the power of sin. The body of sin was crucified with Christ so that we can be set free from the control and the power of sin over our lives. That's why he says in Romans 6 and verse 14, he says, For sin will not have dominion over you, for you are no longer under the law, but under grace. So, he says, sin has no more power over your life. You are free from the control and the dominion of sin. So as a believer, you need to know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, He broke sin's power over your life. So you can look at whatever is controlling you, whatever ungodly appetite or attitude might be controlling you, and you can say, through the power of the cross, that attitude, that appetite, the power of that ungodly appetite or attitude has been broken on the cross. That thing will no longer control me. That thing will no longer dominate me. That attitude, that ungodly attitude, whether it's hate, jealousy, pride, anger, or uh, it's an appetite of the flesh that's controlling you. That power, has, its power over you has been broken through the cross. So in Romans 6, Paul emphasizes the need uh, to know this. Knowing this, that your old man is crucified. You need to know this truth because it's the knowledge of the truth and then you, you're rece receiving the truth that's going to set you and me free. So he says, know this, know this, that you have been set free from sin. Therefore, he says, uh, reckon therefore yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. This is in verse 11. He says, now reckon yourself. Now count it as a fact. See yourself to be dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. So you know this. Secondly, you embrace it as a fact. You reckon this to be true in your life. And thirdly, he says, you must yield your members as instruments of righteousness. That means don't yield yourself uh, any more to sin. This is in verse 13. Don't present your body any more to sin, but instead present your body to God because the power of sin has been broken. That means you make a deliberate choice. You know the truth. You embrace the truth as a fact. Reckon that to be so. And third, yield. You yield yourself to the, uh, the, um, the things of God, not the things of the flesh. So, first step towards overcoming the flesh is to know that you indeed are free from the power of sin. Second, walk in the Spirit. That means to walk in the Spirit simply means to walk yielded, to walk aligned 
uh, and to walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible makes this very clear in Galatians 5 and verse 16. It says, you walk in the Spirit and you will not satisfy the desires of the flesh. So what is the antidote to saying no to the things of the flesh? You walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit means that you're saying, Holy Spirit, I want to do what's pleasing to you. I want to live yielded to you. Holy Spirit, you saturate me. I want to walk under your influence. I want to walk in submission to you. I want to walk yielded to you. You fill me. So there'll be times when your attitudes or your appetites work up and they start pulling you. The flesh begins to pull on you and say, no, you've got to gratify. You've got to satisfy this desire. But that's the time you, you have to walk in the Spirit. That's the time you say, Holy Spirit, come help me. I want to yield to you. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so the Bible tells us to always be filled with the Spirit, always be yielded, always walk in union with Him, always walk in sync, in unison with Him. Let Him always overshadow and dominate your life. The third thing the Bible tells us to do is to crucify the flesh. Now, that's a painful part. To crucify means to put to death. That means I say no. I say no to the pull of those ungodly appetites or attitudes. I guard my heart, I guard my inner person, and I guard my outer man, and I say no to those ungodly appetites. Now Galatians 5 and verse 24, it says, Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its affections and desires. So those who belong to Christ, what is the kind of life they live? They live a life that is that has crucified, that has put to death the flesh with its affections and desires, with all of the appetites, with the pull of the flesh. They're being crucified. You say no to it. Now, of course, this is not something easy. It can be painful at times, but that's where the strength of the Holy Spirit comes. And like the Bible says in Romans 8, 13, that I, by the Spirit, we mortify the deeds of our body. Or Romans 8, 26, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So the Holy Spirit comes in. He empowers us and He helps us overcome our weaknesses. So it can be done but it can be done by the power of the Holy Spirit where you put to death the appetites and the attitudes that are ungodly uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus, you know, he described it like this in Matthew 5, 29 and 30. He said, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. And he said, it's better for you to go into heaven without a right eye or without a right arm. Now he's not talking about doing things literally, the point is this, that sometimes in, when you are cutting sin off your life, it can be painful. It's like amputation. You're cutting it off. But that amputation is necessary. And Jesus said, you've got to do it. So when you're crucifying the flesh, you're saying no to the very thing that is pulling you down, the ungodly appetite or affection. And the last thing is this, make no provision for the flesh. Romans chapter 13 Verse 14 says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. That means don't even give your flesh an opportunity. You know, uh, there's a very simple truth. What you feed will grow, what you starve will die. So the more you starve an ungodly affection, the more you starve an ungodly appetite, it's going to die. Eventually, you're going to get rid of it. But the more you keep feeding it, it's going to keep on growing. It's going to become only stronger in your life. So what you feed will grow, what you starve will die. So you begin to starve those ungodly appetites. Make no provision for the flesh. Don't give your flesh an opportunity. Don't pamper your flesh. Don't pay attention to it. Don't put yourself in places and situations where your flesh will act up and hold you a slave. So don't do that. Make no provision for the flesh is what the Bible says. So instead, you strengthen your inner man. You feed your spiritual appetite. You walk in the presence of God, you in, in prayer and in worship, that feeds your spiritual appetite, it strengthens your inner man, and you are starving the ungodly appetites and attitudes uh, 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 that, that are in you, and you're going to crucify the flesh. So while this whole process and this whole thing uh, may not be easy, this is what the Bible teaches us on how to overcome the flesh. Our biggest enemy at times is not the world, may not even be the devil, it's our own flesh. The, the pull of the ungodly appetites and attitudes 
that we've been feeding all along. And that could be our biggest enemy. In fact, that's probably our biggest enemy. So you and I must take this very seriously and begin to feed our spiritual appetite, begin to feed our inner man, begin to walk in prayer in the presence of God, and begin to crucify the flesh, the ungodly appetites and attitudes, and get rid of them. And the Bible says that we will walk pleasing to God when we do this. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And we've talked to, uh, to you from the Word of God on how to overcome the flesh. This is so important for all of us as believers. And this is something we do every day of our life here on earth. No one can say, you know, I don't need to do this. We've got to live this way every single day of our life here on earth. So take this message seriously. Begin to act upon it. Begin to apply it in your life. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you crucify the sinful deeds of your body. Because when you walk in the Spirit, you and I are pleasing to God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. And I pray right now that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will release a revelation of this into our hearts. May we understand these things. May we receive a revelation of these things. And may we, by the help of the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit, walk in this truth, Lord, so that we can glorify Jesus in every area of our lives. And I pray, God, for a release of your grace upon everyone hearing, that we will truly be able to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for being with us on the program. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the Word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best stopped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact, come, discover, fulfill. Admissions are now open for the two-year full-time course at the APC Bible College in Bangalore starting July 2017. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number 1-800-300-00998, mobile number 99457-0977 or landline number 0806561 You can also email us at contact at apcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website apcwo.org slash Bible College. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of 
pastors and leaders and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.